having looked at productivity software and development tools, now to look at some even more specific, well, mostly specific examples of business software, which is software aimed at a particular area of business. Productivity software is usually quite generic and could be used by any area, any business, but this category is usually for more specific purposes. So for example, project management, if a lot of a business revolves around making projects, you might want to use special software designed just for helping you organize the project. This might include things like scheduling, so organizing when tasks should be done and when. You might use a Gantt chart to do this. You'll definitely recognize a Gantt chart if you haven't heard of that before. Often they are good for collaboration. They can, use, they can be accessed by multiple people. You might have one task list and it might let you assign different jobs to different people. When somebody is done, they can add to that task list. For example, here is a program called Gantt Pro used for project management. This is a Gantt chart, so you can see the time across the top and the little bar showing you how long it's going to take and the order of the project. We've got a task list on the side and it's been assigned to different people. So the five people in this project are collaborating, are working together, they're able to modify and update the progress um, and we can all see what's going on. It helps you keep track of what is going on in the project. Another example of business software are MISs. So an MIS is a management information system, which is quite vague as a name, management information system. It's quite vague deliberately because really it's very specific to what the company is doing. What an MIS is, is one system which connects different aspects of the business. So you might have one program which links together all of your major things you're doing. So this may be multimedia. Multimedia is when you've got a different, a range of different um, ways to express things. You might have got videos, you might have got audio, you might have got text, you might have got images all together in one website or in one application. Here is a very low resolution example, I'm sorry. Um, it's of a school, MIS, called Bromcom, which is what my school uses. Yours might use similar things. So my timetable is here. We do the registers on, on this MIS. You can add reward points, negative points, add detentions, look at progress, look at exam results. Lots of similar but different aspects of the school, in this case, are combined into one website. So different companies will have different MISs for their own purpose, of course, but it brings together lots of different things, often with a variety of different media. A third example is publishing software, also called desktop publishing software, or DTP. So if you see DTP, that means it's publishing software. These are for more creative tasks, so things which are more visually appealing than just a Word document, for example. Often templates are included to help you get started. Microsoft Publisher is an example. Something like Photoshop and InDesign, you could argue, are DTP examples too. Um, so here, Publisher, you can make a new file. It gives you some templates to help you get going. Once you're in, it's it works best with images and uh, you know organizing text on a screen. You might write the text in a Word document and copy and paste it into Publisher because Publisher is designed for organizing the layout, adding images, adding different pages uh, with custom shapes, things like this. So you would use it for leaflets, business cards, uh, magazines, those sorts of things. Manufacturing is a particular sector, of course, where you're making products, making physical products. And usually this will nowadays involve CAD CAM tools. The CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and the CAM stands for Computer Aided Manufacturer. So you could have one or both of those things in your company, right? And the fact that you're using a computer often means what you are making ends up being more accurate because humans make mistakes. A computer doesn't make mistakes unless it's being told to make a mistake. So often more accurate. And also because you can test things really quickly on a computer, often these are a little bit cheaper because you don't have to actually physically make a prototype or you might physically make a product, it might not work. The benefit of using a computer is you can test it virtually without wasting money or time on a physical version. To show you pictures, here is the CAD stage, the design stage, using a program to do a 3D model. You can simulate it, you can play around with the sizes and the way they're joined up. Better doing it on a computer than doing it in real life where it costs money and time. The actual making is the CAM bit, the manufacturing bit. Here is a robot carving out the wood. 
much more accurate than a human potentially. It might be more efficient too. It may not waste as much material. Um, 3D printing is another example of where it's done by a computer. Um, so it can be cheaper overall, although the robots are usually very expensive. And the final one I want to cover, I know there's a lot in this video, but the final one to learn are expert systems. So an expert system is usually using AI nowadays. So AI is artificial intelligence, it's where the program takes in lots and lots and lots of data and tries to learn from what the data is showing. So it looks for trends and makes predictions based on what it's learned. So the idea is an expert is a human, but the computer can try and mimic that expertise by using lots of data. So a common use of this is in healthcare, not the only use, but a common use is in healthcare. By healthcare, we mean hospitals, doctors, nurses. Because there are so many test results and so many scans which are done in hospitals, you might want to use a computer to filter out some of these results to make it easier for the doctor or to save time or to try and find errors the doctor might make because all humans make errors. So often it's used to learn patterns in the results to try and inform decisions and support the human decision making.